This is going to be video number 91 on your firearms defense channel. Uh, I, when I started this channel, it was going to be about uh, firearms and shooting, and I wasn't, I wasn't going to get into the political issues too much, but uh, I changed my mind with the recent events that have unfolded in Philadelphia, and uh, this is going to be a constant thing from here on out, it looks like, so I decided I should address this issue in uh, the interest of my subscribers, because I... Uh, I believe I have something to contribute to this issue here with these videos. It's probably going to be a series of videos. Now, the first thing is, these videos, I'm sure they're not going to be politically correct. But I've been called a lot of things on my channel. People have used a lot of profanity towards me. They told me they hope I get the needle, they hope I get life in prison, they hope I rot in jail, and all this stuff, but, but nobody has ever called me politically correct. So, uh, so when somebody says that I'm politically correct and I'm doing a politically correct thing, then, uh, then I've uh, failed in my mission as a firearms defense. So uh, you can take that for what it's worth. So I'm going to, uh, I'm going to delve into the recent riots in Philadelphia. As I said, this is going to be several videos long. Okay, this is dated uh, the Washington Times. It's dated Monday, August the 8th, 2011. It's got a picture right on the front of a uh, mob running down the street. It's a real small picture. That's the way it come up. I'll try to uh, get this in there and see if I can show it. Yeah, that's a, that's a picture of the mob running through the street. Okay. This reads, male micro Michael A. Nutter. Now, this is a black gentleman, of course, as you probably all know, a middle-class black gentleman. Philadelphia, Mayor Michael A. Nutter, telling marauding black youths, you have damaged your own race, imposed a tougher curfew Monday in response to the latest flash mob. Spontaneous groups of teens who attack people at random on the streets of the city's tourist and fashionable shopping distance. Take those god darn hoodies down, especially in the summer, Mr. Nutter, the city's third black mayor, is said in an angry lecture aimed at black teens. Pull your pants up and buy a belt, because no one wants to see your underwear or the crack of your butt. If you walk into somebody's office with your hair uncombed and a pick in the back and your shoes untied and your pants sat down, tattoos up and down your arms and on your neck, and you wonder why somebody won't hire you. They don't hire you because you look like you're crazy, the mayor said. You have damaged your own race. Mr. Nutter announced that he was beefing up police patrols in certain neighborhoods, enlisting volunteers to monitor the streets, and moving up the weekend curfew for minors to 9 p.m. Parents will face increased fines for each time their child is caught violating the curfew. The head of Philadelphia's chapter of the National Association for the Advancement of Colored People, J. Wyatt Mondesher, said it took courage for Mr. Nutter to deliver the message. These are majority African American youths and they need to be called on it, Mr. Mondesher said. Mary Catherine Roper, a spokeswoman for the Philadelphia chapter of the American Civil Liberties Union, said her group sees the curfew move as legal, with its sole caveat being that it not evolve into an excuse to hassle any use on the street. The state ACLU filed a federal lawsuit last year challenging Philadelphia's police use of stop and frisk searches. A settlement announced in June allowed the program to continue, along with safeguards to prevent the use of racial profiling. In the past two years, the city of brotherly love has been the scene of several flash mobs in which use planned in which use meet at planned locations by texting one another and then committing assorted mayhem. In one episode, teens knocked down passers-by on a central city street and entered an upscale department store where they assaulted shoppers. On another occasion. Hundreds of teens gathered in a restaurant district and menaced patrons, forcing some restaurant owners to lock customers inside temporarily 
for their own protection or to close early. In the latest event, June 29th, about 20 to 30 youths descended on Center City after dark, then punched, beat, and robbed bystanders. One man was kicked so savage, savagely that he was hospitalized with a fractured skull. Police arrested four people, including an 11-year-old. Other cities have grappled with the problem of destructive flash mobs. In Chicago on Memorial Day weekend, roving teens flash gang signs, knock cyclists off their bikes, and harass picnickers. Police closed a popular beach as, a viol as the violence escalated. In January, dozens of young people stormed a popular Milwaukee Mall late in the afternoon and scared customers and employees. Okay, so anyway, that's what this commentary is about. Now, now here's a big problem as I see it. We are, we are realistically, we're a nation divided. We have black communities, we have white communities. That's just the way it is. If anybody's going to be white and middle class, they're going to buy a house in an all-white neighborhood. And the price of the house is going to be determined by the percentage of minority people, if any, in the neighborhood. And the races live separately for that reason. As you've seen from this, uh, this headline here, if you're a white person, it's literally worth your life to be around black uh, people uh, in any area. I mean, these, these are things that can just sort of happen, and you can find yourself surrounded by 20 black teenagers for no reason at all getting stomped on and killed and stuff like that. I, I live in Los Angeles here, of course, and I won't go to the inner city for any reason whatsoever. I, I don't even drive through those areas. So our society is rigidly segregated for all practical purposes. People will mingle on the job to some degree because uh, rules and regulations uh, and quotas being what they are, companies are forced to hire a certain percentage of minorities. So people will mingle on the job to some degree, and then they'll go home after work and uh, you know go to their own separate neighborhoods and uh, stay there. And that's just the way it is, and nothing is going to change that to any degree at all that I see. It's just the way it is, and you can't really blame uh, people, you know, for wanting to buy safe houses in a safe neighborhood and uh, live in predominantly white areas. Now, as far as, uh, as far as these riots go, the only thing that I see that's going to prevent this in the future is uh, if a lot of states are, get to be like Arizona and uh, Nevada and Vermont to some degree and all these other states where citizens have the right to carry. And Concealed carrying and citizens carrying would stop all of this because, uh, well, you know, you're surrounded by 10 people that want to stomp you to death. If you pull out a Glock and waste a couple of them, they're not going to hang around. They're going to be gone. So, so that's about the first remedy I see for this problem. Now, the police aren't going to be of any help at all. Uh, uh, I, just read the, uh, I just read the headline to you, you know, where were the police? They weren't anywhere around. They're totally, totally useless. Uh, and in fact, I would go so far as to say if we were going to have a mob action against a predominantly white neighborhood, if we had 4,000 uh, use on the way to a predominantly white neighborhood and they were going to uh, riot and burn houses and stuff like that. And I think the police and the National Guard would go door to door and collect weapons from the white people to prevent anybody from getting hurt. So I don't think there's going to be any help from the, the police or law enforcement community on this issue at all. Certainly the people involved in doing this are going to continue doing it. I don't see any uh, let up on that at all, but uh, this is all. This is all just what's happening now. Now, it's obvious what's happening. Anybody can read the headlines and uh, see what's happening. And if you're intelligent and you're you know white and everything, you just stay out of the way, and that's about the best you can do. 
So for the rest of um, the rest of my time on these videos that I'm going to make, I'm going to delve into why I think these things are happening and how we set our society up for this to happen and uh, the reason that it's happening and uh, why I think it will continue far into the future. Now, this was set up, this was all set up a long, long time ago as far as I was, as far as I'm concerned. Now, I was in uh, Tennessee, in Nashville, Tennessee recently for the Chet Atkins uh, convention there, one of my other hobbies is music, and uh, I uh, stopped in a restaurant there, and uh, anyway, I was in the restaurant, I didn't eat a meal or anything, I uh, had already ate that day, but they had a book for sale there over on their counters, and I started looking through this book, and I got to looking through it, and it seemed like a totally, completely fascinating book. So. I went ahead and bought this book, and uh, when I got home, I read it in about three days' time. It was so fascinating, and uh, that's what this, uh, the rest of these uh, videos in this series are going to be about, is this book that I read. Now, why I think we're going through what we're going through today with all the racial turmoil and everything, I think it dates back to the Civil War. This book that I want to report on is Everything you were taught about the Civil War is wrong. Ask a Southerner. It's by a Southern historian named Locker and Seabrook, and he's in fact wrote several books. And uh, that's what this book is about. About, and it's uh, it's well worth a read. So I'm already 11 minutes into this video here, so I'm just going to delve into it a little bit here, and then I'm going to continue this on the video number two in this series. Let's see. Okay, I'm just going to read a little bit of the Did You Know That page here, and then I'm going to continue this on the next uh, video that I'm uh, going to make. Did you know that American slavery got its start in the North? The American abolition movement began in the South. Most Southern generals did not own slaves, and many, like Robert E. Lee, were abolitionists. Many Northern generals, like Ulysses S. Grant, owned slaves and said they would not fight for abolition. According to the 1860 census, a mere, a mere 4.8 percent of Southerners owned slaves. 95.2 percent did not. Abraham Lincoln was a white supremacist who said he wanted to send all blacks back to Africa. Jefferson Davis adopted a black boy during the war and freed southern slaves before the North did. Lincoln was not against slavery. He was against the spread of slavery. Lincoln's Emancipation Proclamation did not free a single slave. True slavery was never practiced in the South. Lincoln was a big government liberal. Davis was a small government conservative. In the 1860 and 1864 elections, less than 50 percent of Americans voted for Lincoln. There were tens of thousands of both black and Native American slave owners. Lincoln started the Civil War, not the South. The North said it fought to preserve the Union, not to abolish slavery. The South said it fought to uphold the Constitution, not to maintain slavery. The Northern armies were racially segregated. The Southern armies were racially integrated. After the emancipation, 95% of all blacks voluntarily remained in the South. It would have cost 10 times less to simply free American slaves than to go to war. As many as 1 million African Americans fought for the Confederacy. Europe would have supported the South, but she was scared off by Lincoln's war threats. Northern prisons had a higher death rate than Southern ones. The original Ku Klux Klan was an anti-Yankee organization with thousands of black members. Reconstruction was a dismal failure, which is why the South is still recovering from the war. Okay, I'm going to sign off on this video and continue it on the next one.